So today we're going to discuss the different parts that basically every computer has. And for today only, we are going to focus just on what we call hardware. Um, and hardware is basically any physical device that goes into your computer. So as you go, stop and jot down um, the functions of each of the different parts of hardware that go into every computer. First we'll talk about what each part does, then we'll look at an example um, of a different type of computer that has the same type of parts. The main piece of your computer, and in fact the most expensive one, is the CPU, which stands for Central Processing Unit, and we'll call that the processor for short. The processor does the thinking in your computer. If it were your body, it would be your brain. Okay, um, And the CPU is able to complete operations. It does things like math um, and logic. And it's the thing that's able to uh, answer those yes or no binary questions that we've discussed. So if it has two pieces of information, it can compare those two pieces of information. Okay? The CPU does the thinking on the computer. The CPU works really, really closely with something called main memory or RAM, random access memory. And main memory is special because it stores information, but it can give it back really, really quickly. So an analogy for main memory might be a whiteboard. We can write on our whiteboard to keep things there for a short time. If I want to think about a question, often I want to use a whiteboard to write a few things down about it and look at them at the same time. But I wouldn't want to write a whole book on a whiteboard. I can only keep a little bit of information on a whiteboard. That's what RAM is for. I can only keep a little bit of information on it. And when I turn my computer off, my RAM gets erased. It's all gone. When I want to keep something for longer, when the computer wants to keep something for longer, it keeps it in what we call storage. And that could be a hard disk, or what we call flash memory, or a solid state drive. Um, and that's for keeping things for a really long time. Um, it doesn't go away the second I turn off the machine. It's stable, um, but it's not very fast. So for example, if I want to play a song on my computer, um, I keep all of my songs over here in storage. But when I want to play one of those songs, I need my main memory to get that song out of storage and load it into main memory so that the CPU can get in and out of that song's data very quickly. So how do we actually play the song or get the information that we need to play the song? Computers have what we call peripherals, and peripheral just means to the side. Um, and we're going to call them also I.O. devices, input and output devices, because they give the computer information or let the computer output information. So the keyboard and the mouse over here are strictly input devices because they give the computer information, but they don't take information back from the computer. So when I want to play that song, I might click um, in a certain part of my screen, and that information goes to the CPU. The CPU tells main memory um, that it needs to get a song from storage. The song gets loaded into main memory, and the CPU starts processing it. How does it get it out? Well, it sends that information to the speakers, and the speaker's job is to play the music. That's it. The speakers take a signal from the CPU um, with the music that they need to play, um, and they play it. We're actually skipping a, a step or two in between there. There's another I.O. device that helps those speakers because the speakers are actually kind of dumb. Um, but that's the general idea. Speakers are an output device. So let's look at an iPhone 6. The iPhone 6 is itself a computer. We've talked about how it's a tiny computer that's in your pocket. Um, it has all of these same parts, it just has them in a very, very small version that fits in our pocket. So 10 years ago, you wouldn't have had an example of a small computer in your pocket, but today we have the iPhone um, and other smartphones that work basically the same way. So let's look at each of the parts of the iPhone 6. 
The CPU of the iPhone 6 is the Apple A8, okay? And Apple actually makes their processor with the main memory already built into the same unit. They are separate, but they're inside the same unit. So the CPU, which does all of the thinking, and the RAM, the whiteboard for the, um, the CPU, where it can get and um, record information really quickly, it's all built into one thing. Now, you don't need to know what all of these other pieces are necessarily, um, but they're all I.O. devices. So the accelerometer is an input device that tells the CPU the kind of movement, movement that's happening um, physically in the phone. So when you move, the accelerometer takes some of that information and passes it back to the CPU. So it's an input device. The LTE radio here is what communicates with the cell towers for your cell provider. So when you have a message to send, the LTE radio is an output device. When you have a message that you're receiving, like you're downloading YouTube video or you're receiving a text message, the LTE radio acts as an input device and it sends messages um, into the CPU and the CPU, CPU can deal with them. If we look at the backside, the iPhone also keeps its storage right on board. So the iPhone has flash memory, which is just a different kind of storage from a hard disk, but it's long-term storage still. Um, and depending on how much you pay for the iPhone, you have a different amount of long-term storage. So if you get the cheapest one, you have 16 gigabytes of flash storage. And if you get the expensive one, you have 128 gigabytes. More songs that you can keep on there, more videos, uh, more books, whatever it is you keep on your iPhone, it's all stored right here in flash memory. And when your iPhone wants to pull it up and use it, it needs to transfer it to back here, the RAM, and the A8 processor. We can look at some other I.O. devices that are also in the iPhone. There's a Wi-Fi module that communicates with the Wi-Fi network in your house. Um, there's a touchscreen controller here. Uh, so your screen contains both an input and an output device. The output device is the screen itself. Right? The images you see on that screen are outputs from the CPU. And when you touch the screen, that's an input device that goes back into the CPU. So the touchscreen controller is itself an I.O. device. So there are lots of different I.O. devices that our computers use and that our iPhones use.